Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're presenting an hour of the most compelling paranormal experiences that have changed people's worldview. If you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I had gotten home from work and taken my dogs around the back of my grandma's house. It had just gotten dark at 9 p.m., it was summertime. I walk around the corner of the house, and as I enter the view of her complete backyard, I see something on the top right corner about to jump over the gate. When it saw me, it retracted its leg and then sat next to the tree that was by the gate. The one swift motion from the gate to the tree is easily six to seven feet, and it did it effortlessly in one motion, it would have taken a few motions from a human to go from the gate to that tree. This swift motion was not human-like. It sits there, silhouetted by the neighborhood's back porch light and the shade of the tree. As I was trying to figure out what it was, my dogs went to the bathroom up on the top part of the lawn, the lawn was split into two by a very large bush. So my dogs run to the top part of the lawn, but on the opposite side of it, so my dogs are on the left part, and this thing is directly opposite on the top right. I never diverted my eyes away from this thing, and it never stopped looking at me. I have a million things going through my head. At first, I thought, it's my cat. Because of the way it sat. Its silhouette made it look like it sat like an animal does, with its legs out front of it. But it was way too big to be my cat. I was just convincing myself it wasn't even there, it was all in my head, when one of my dogs came running around the corner of the bush. She stops mid-run and looks right over to where this thing is sitting. She barks only once at it, which is unusual, especially for my girl, and then books it over to me. My dogs love other people and animals, and I usually have to catch them before they see them, because otherwise they will run over to them. They both ran away immediately from whatever it was, no bark, no interest, just fear, when they saw it. So I said fuck this and went, okay, time to go. And I ran back around the house inside, where I sat silently listening for over an hour. I never saw anything like it before or after. That house had some creepy stuff, though. I used to sleep in a room on the third floor when I first moved there at 17. I would always get a phone call at, I know this is super cliche, but it's absolutely true, I put that on everything I love, 3 AM, and I would answer, but nobody would ever say anything. They wouldn't answer or breathe loudly, they would just silently sit there until I hung up. It happened only in that room. If I slept at a friend's, it wouldn't happen. If I slept on the couch in that same house, it wouldn't happen. I eventually moved to the room directly across from it, and it stopped completely. My best friend moved into that house because he had nowhere to live. He told me once that he and his girlfriend at the time were walking downstairs in the middle of the night, and as she turned the corner to the main living room to go out that front door, she screamed and shoved him backwards. He said he didn't even want to look, he was so scared by her reaction. They went out the back door, and she said she saw a man with an older, timey hat standing in the back by the fireplace. My grandpa, who had long since passed, always wore a hat, so I like to think it was him. My dad used to see a white lady in that house. He recently brought it up again, and I told him I thought he was trying to scare me as a kid, and with a very straight face and a very serious tone, he told me absolutely not, and he and his sister saw this lady. When I moved to the room across from the one where I got the 3 a.m. calls, I would always close my door and the one across the way, and when I'd get up in the night to pee, the one across the way would always be open. I was talking to my friend just the other day, and he said his door would always be open. He would shut it completely because it freaked him out that it was open, and without fail, it would always open itself at night. For me, it was just the door across the way that would open, not my room door, like it did to my friend. The house I grew up in was definitely haunted too. But the one I always tell people about is the one my friends were there for. I had let a couple of my ex-friends move into my mom's house, she was off living her life, God knows where, lol. One night I was watching TV in my room up at the front of the house. I decided I'd go to the kitchen, and as I walk into the kitchen, everyone comes running from one of the back rooms. They said, damn near yelling, is your house haunted? I just said, yeah, it is. And they said, we were all just in the back, with both rooms doors wide open. It was winter, so no windows were open. They were sitting on the floor in one room, and my friend's grandma, who he took care of, was in the room across from them, all doors wide open. They finished, we were all chilling back there when the door of the room my grandma is in slammed shut on its own. I just laughed and said, yeah, that's probably John. So John was mine, and my foster sister was my ghost. We called him that because one night my sister and I were sitting on the floor of her room. We each had a house phone in our rooms. The phone went off, and I answered. It was an older lady, 
50s or 60s easily, and she said, Hi, did this number just call me? And I said, No, because neither my sister nor I had been on the phone in a while. The lady said, Well, I usually wouldn't even call an unknown number, but the name on my caller ID said my friend's name, John, who has passed away, she said the last name, but I forgot what it was. So anyway, I just told the lady that was weird, and it should have come up with my stepdad's name or my mom's name, which I told her the names of, and she didn't know my parents. The lady seemed baffled and hung up. My sister and I were like, okay, that's fucking weird. Then, after this, weird stuff would happen around the house all the time. Stuff would move that shouldn't have been moved, and there would be loud, unknown random noises. We would always just say, stop being weird, John. Or something along those lines. We never really got scared of it. There are two more that are a bit more recent. Years ago, I was staying in the backyard of a friend's house. My husband and I were just hanging out when, right outside our window, we heard around five loud bangs. She had this big cement pillar that you would see sitting outside a fancy house or something, but it just sat in her backyard. It sounded exactly like someone banging a two by four on the cement pillar. My husband walks outside to see what it was, and no one is there. She lived where her neighbors were a good distance apart, so anyone running away would have been seen by how quick we checked it out. There was nobody. My husband came back, and we just wrote it off. Then my friend, who was very pregnant and super cranky all the time, texted me and said, were you guys banging something? And I was like, OSHT, because that meant it really happened and it was really loud. I was sad, no, and that it was weird, and she was just pissed off because it made the dog bark, and that woke her up. Nothing ever really happened there again while I was there. So we moved to this guy's land, and my very first dream was of my closet. My closet was opened, and inside was this back hole that looked like a cave. In front of this black hole was a charred, angry person. They were burnt from head to toe and almost like growling. I wasn't even scared of them, funnily enough, I was talking to them in the voice I use for my animals, going, oh no, you're mad? Why are you so mad? It's okay. Saying stuff like that, but in a baby voice. Lol, but anyway, about a few months later, my husband gets off work and says his boss told him about this land. He said this medicine woman asked him to come and bless it because, way back in the day, two tribes lived here. One came and slaughtered all the other ones. They burned them and left them dead on this land. Now our boss is Christian, but other than that, he doesn't believe in ghosts, and he said he just thought them blessing the land was sort of dumb, but he is super nice and said it couldn't hurt, so he let her come on to do it. He said it was the weirdest thing, though. She was doing her rituals, chants, and all those things. The wind was crazy, it gets insane up here. We just had 90 miles per hour wind last month. So the wind was going, and she said, okay, the chief and his tribe are here now. And when she said that, the wind completely stopped. She waited a bit, said some more chants, and then said, they are going to be leaving now. And as she said, the wind kicked back up in full force. Our boss said he doesn't really believe in stuff like that, but it was absolutely weird and not exactly explainable by him. So maybe that charred guy I saw in my dream the first night I stayed was a flashback to the tribe that was killed, Ike. But it weirded me out to find that out after I dreamed about that guy. I still think most of these have an explainable reason as to why they happened. But those are the most paranormal things that always stick out to me. I have some more, I'm sure, but those are the main ones that are freaky and pretty much unexplainable to me. Thanks for reading if you stuck it out this far. In October of this year, my husband's grandfather, who we were very close with, was in the hospital receiving comfort care only. He had suffered a massive stroke over the weekend, and as a family, we decided to take him off of life support on Wednesday. My husband and I stayed at the hospital until very late on Wednesday night and traveled home for a few hours of sleep. That night, around 3 a.m., I woke up, and there was a short, heavier woman wearing a white blouse and black pants standing in our doorway. I knew right away that it was my husband's grandma. I never had the opportunity to meet her, but I could tell it was her. I told my husband about this in the morning, and he said that his grandma always wore black pants and a white blouse, and that what I told him gave him chills. She passed away in 2007 and from the stories I've been told, his grandparents were soulmates through and through. His grandpa had told me a few times that I reminded him of her. We had to travel quite a distance to get to the hospital, and I felt her presence with us all the way there. When we got there, we were informed that his grandpa's vitals were starting to drop and that he probably wouldn't live much longer. I closed my eyes and said in my head, it's time, come get your husband, over and over in my head. He passed not more than a couple minutes later. Another weird thing from that night was that my phone would not charge and would not hold a charge. 
I tried to plug it in when we arrived at his hospital room, and it would not charge there either. After he passed, my phone started charging. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences in my life, however, this one was the most real and emotional for me. It changed my worldview in that I now truly believe our loved ones watch over us in the afterlife, not all the time, they probably have shit to do. I sure do miss that old guy. When I was a kid, my mom, brother, and I moved in with our stepdad in an old house in a small village in the country. It was over 100 years old, and I hated it. When we first moved in, my stepdad didn't own a TV and spent most evenings working in his shed, so the house was quiet. The top landing ran horizontally with the back of the house, which the wall was against next door, a semi-detached house, so if the bathroom or the bedroom doors were shut, it saw no light at all. The stairs had a high rise, so from the ground floor it rose to the top floor ceiling, and I always had an uncomfortable feeling when walking up, like something was hiding in that top corner. In fact, I never walked up those stairs but bolted up as fast as I could every time. Fortunately, I never had an experience with these stairs but wanted to set the theme of this dark, quiet old house. One evening when my parents were out, I was about 14 or 15 years old, my brother was downstairs watching football, and I was watching some ghost program in my room on my top bunk, not really too scared or phased by it. The host program is talking about an angry, sour man who used to own the house before passing over, and they feel a large presence in the attic. As they said, he has entered the room, the most powerful feeling of a cold electrical current passed through my body from my head to my feet. It was so strong that when it hit my toes, it made them jolt, and they felt this energy flick a meter out to my stereo, which had a built-in radio. I shit you, not the energy turned the radio on, and because I rarely used it, it wasn't set to a channel and blasted static noise at almost full volume. I leapt out of my bunk and ran downstairs to my brother and explained what happened. He didn't believe, or perhaps didn't care, but he agreed to come upstairs with me to turn it off after the football. I considered perhaps I had accidentally lent on the controller in bed, but as we walked in, the controller was sitting on top of the stereo itself. I'm not a very good storyteller, so I apologize if this was difficult to follow. I had one other experience with this house, but it turned out it wasn't quite paranormal. I've witnessed quite a few paranormal things. The first one, though, really made me a believer and showed me how closed-minded people were or are about the paranormal. I was about 8 ninths and had a friend staying over, he was 10 11. We were in the living room, playing around with flashlights. I don't know what time it was, I just know it was late at night. At one point, I shone my light kind of over his head on the ceiling in the corner. We both saw it. It was a door that opened downward and stairs that didn't come all the way down, and in the gap between the door and stairs, we saw a foot appear, like someone was walking down. It was also weird, like we could see through it, but yet it had a greenish tint. It scared the crap out of both of us. We both looked at each other and said, at the same time, did you see that? So we ran to my parents' room and woke them up, but they wouldn't believe us. We tried doing it again but never saw it again. I'm 41, my parents still live there, and I've tried it over the years again and again but never seen it again. Now, there is no attic in the living room. The attic actually starts just after the living room. The living room ceiling is nice and high, and on the other side of it is the roof. It definitely made me a believer from an early age. I had plenty more experiences after that. Most of them are at my parents' property. I'll start chronologically, bracing the ones that really made me believe at the time. My first experience with ghostly nature was when I was 7 or 8, maybe a bit younger. We were visiting my uncle's house. Everyone was downstairs in the living room. My cousin and I went upstairs to play in his room. A couple of minutes later, he said that he needed to pee, so we went downstairs. I was alone in his room. The door was open to the hallway, and every light was on as well. I was facing the open door, looking down at the toys I was playing with, when suddenly I saw some misty figure pass away through the hallway. I was scared, didn't make any noise, and just waited, terrified, for my cousin to return. I don't know what it was, if it was. Second incident, I was a loner, my best and only friend moved away to another city. My sister would bring her friends to our house every time, and I would hang out with them. I am 12 years of age at this moment. So, one night, while hanging out in my sister's room with her friends, the light in her room went out for 5 seconds, which made everyone scream and run to a corner, and by itself, the light went back on. It wasn't a small fallout because only the lights in that room went off and on. When the light came back on, my sister started screaming, being scared and angry at the same time, and pointing at the top of her wardrobe, saying, who turned the pictures? She had three pictures with casings on top of her wardrobe, and they were all facing the wall. 
It was freaky, to this day, no one has admitted to doing such a thing. Within the same year, I guess, my sister saw her friend's face glowing in the dark, smiling at her while she wasn't there. Third one, I was 22 years old when I was struggling with depression for a couple of years. I started watching Ouija board videos on YouTube for like three days in a row and hadn't slept for like 40 hours, I guess, by then. So, I decided to try it through my PC. There was this website where there was an Ouija board on the screen, and you would use your mouse as the cub thingy. I placed my hand lightly on the mouse and started asking the question, is someone here? No movement, I asked it again, no movement again. The third time was a calm, and my hand slightly on the mouse started moving slowly to yes. I freaked out, said goodbye, and closed the website. I was shaking madly with fear. I lied down on my bed, trying to calm down and explain it away, then suddenly I got an electric shock on the bottom of my left foot. I kid you not, I immediately went into exorcism mode, jumped off my bed, said prayers, went downstairs, grabbed a jar filled with water, said prayers onto the water, and sprayed it around the house. I did this for an hour straight, then calmed down, and promised myself never to do this. This for me was definitive proof, you can say it was an idiomotor effect for the mouse moving slightly to yes, but how would you explain the electric shock on the bottom of my left foot five minutes later? The last one was bizarre, two years later from the third incident. I was living on my own now and had this friend with benefits from my neighbor, she was an alcoholic and pretty unstable, so was I, not an alcoholic but kind of unstable. We made each other happy through sex, I guess, but she would lash out and be mad most of the time. Not at me but at everyone else. She also had this ability to read your hand and the coffee stains on the cup you drank it from. I witnessed many people she didn't know cry when she read their hand or coffee cups. Six months into our benefit relationship, she started to terrorize another neighbor girl who fancied me. I'm not going to type the whole story of that, but it came down to me getting angry at her for the first time and closing our benefit relationship. She went mad and came to my door. She said this to me, I will curse you. Knowing it might be dangerous, but then again, at that moment, I was so angry at her and confident in myself that I called her a bluff and said, send whomever the fuck you want. And so I slammed the door on her. A day later, I started to get scratchy between my thighs. This continued for a week, and I started to see bruises. At first, I thought it was an allergic reaction, but after seeing the bruises, I went to the home doctor. And he told me it was pubic lice, he prescribed a cream for me and told me to wash everything I touched and weird above 60 or 80, I'd get any more, so I did. My sheet was still a bit wet, but I still decided to lie on my bed with it. As soon as I lied down, my body shrimped thickly, and I couldn't move for 15 seconds. I was like, what the fuck was that? So, the idea that the pubic lice and that paralyzes for 15 seconds were my neighbor's curse started to develop. So, I began taunting and entertaining that idea. I said, is that all you got? Being home alone and speaking to myself. I prepared for something to happen, the first day went by after the taunting, and nothing happened. The second day went by, and nothing happened. So, I began to drop the idea of this all being a curse. Then suddenly I woke up between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., being paralyzed and hearing something loudly run upstairs. Your basic sleep paralyzes include not being able to talk, move, etc. After 30 seconds, I could move again, and, at that moment, I was convinced and stopped taunting whatever it was and told them they had harmed me enough and I had suffered enough to leave me be from now on and put my trust in what is good out there. And it stopped, nothing happened after that incident. I went to my neighbor as well, apologized, and said that we had a fun time, but we should just leave each other be. I can explain the sleep paralysis, but that loud running upstairs was just the nail on the coffin, I lived in an apartment with four houses, and yes, it is a sound sensitive building, you could hear any door opening and closing. But I never did. Only the loud running through the stairs, no door opened or closed, no keys were used, I am still convinced it wasn't any of my neighbors. So, that's it. I do believe you can get cursed, I do believe interdimensional beings exist and are here, but they mostly leave you alone unless you provoke or invite them. Just as a premise, I'm still extremely skeptical of paranormal events, but there was one time in my entire life that I seriously think I saw someone disappear right in front of me. I don't know, but I only have one explanation for it and that doesn't even make sense. In March of 2011, I went to a local Circle K convenience store. I had been to this store almost every day since June of 2004, so I was a regular customer, and despite the fact there was such a huge turnover of employees who worked there, most of the employees got to know me well. I also recognized some of the regular customers there as well. As a premise, this store was small and only had one entrance or exit, 
and it was easy to see everybody shopping in the store. It did have one bathroom, but that was the only other room in the store. Anyway, I pull up in the parking lot one day, and this woman walks in the store literally about 5 seconds before I did. When I walked in and browsed the snack sections, I noticed I didn't see her anywhere. I must have browsed for about 10 minutes, I couldn't make up my mind on the snacks, and I still didn't see her. I figured she must have used the restroom. When I went up to the cashier, the cashier was a woman who knew me well at this point, I had seen her working there for years. I told her that I saw a woman walk in right before me. I told her she was about 30 years old, a 5 apostrophe 6 ish white woman with black hair, an abnormally large buttocks, and a small waist. I even described that she was wearing black sweatpants and a white shirt. Oddly enough, the cashier knew who I was talking about, but she also told me this woman hadn't been in the store that day, which made the situation even stranger because this had been the only time I had seen this woman. The cashier knew I wasn't being a creeper, and she figured I was just confused by what I had seen. The cashier confirmed to me that nobody went in the restroom. She told me I was the first customer to enter the store in about 15 minutes. At this point, my stomach dropped, and I was just so confused. The cashier asked me if I was stressed because of college and seeing things, but I told her that wasn't the issue. I told her I knew what I saw, and I told her that woman had literally just walked in before I did. Besides, even if I was seeing things, how could I see a depiction of a real-life woman I had never seen? The only logical explanation I can think of is that the cashier lied to me, and that woman was in the bathroom the whole time, it must have been 15 minutes. However, this cashier was a friendly lady who never had an issue with me, and I don't think she had any secrets, e.g. the woman in the bathroom was secretly her drug dealer, so I have no idea what it was. For some reason, it still bugs me nearly 10 years later, because I'm one of those people who literally doesn't believe in the paranormal in general. At 30 years old, this is the only time I've still had any paranormal-like things happen to me. I was nearly 5 years old when my mom's sister died. She passed away from anorexia, and it was sudden, and nobody was able to say goodbye. I don't really believe in ghosts and things, but my mom does because of this whole experience, but I was too young and I don't really remember. Basically, when she died, my nan called my mom, hysterically crying over the phone, and instead of asking her what's wrong, my mom dropped the phone and turned around because she thought her sister was standing right there, and it scared her. When she turned, there was nobody there, and my nan told my mom her sister had died. But that's not the creepy part. The creepy part was that, being around 5, I couldn't sleep alone for the next year because I would wake up screaming that someone was trying to hold my hand. As I said, I was too young to really remember this, but I do remember a phase where I didn't sleep alone as a kid. But yeah, if I were to ever be alone, I would wake up screaming and crying and run into my mom's room, saying someone was trying to hold my hand. And that's what my aunt used to do as I fell asleep. Mine happened rather recently, actually. I'm glad I stumbled upon this thread because I'm not really active in this sub. I work in an old building out in rural Virginia that was once a high school, but they converted it into a community center. Only part of the building has been renovated, so about 80% of the facility is decrepit, falling apart, and has no working electricity either. Needless to say, it gets sketchy at night there. It's a known fact among the community, a very tight-knit community where this is, that about 50 years ago, a janitor committed suicide by hanging himself in a tree right next to the facility, this tree is outside the window of the desk I sit at, keep that in mind. The school board apparently fucked him over, and he financially collapsed and then committed suicide because of it, so he's definitely got some disdain for the building. I've tried to do research on this, but I haven't found anything on it since it happened so long ago, before the internet, obviously, but through word of mouth, the community says he still haunts the building. I honestly thought it was bullshit until I worked a few night shifts at the facility. In the first experience I had, I was waiting for a sanitation team to come in and clean the conference room we have in the building to prevent the spread of COVID, but they were running superbly late. It was around midnight, and I began hearing noises down the hall, like tables being moved and chairs shifting. Keep in mind that I'm the only one in the building. I continue to hear the noises, so I proceed to check it out. I look down the hallways, and no one is there. I shrug it off and go back to my desk. I continue to hear shit, but I just kind of shrug it off since it's an old building. When I'm back at my desk, I look out the window and see a figure of an adult male near the tree. I did a double take, and the figure was gone. I was now spooked at this point, to say the least. The sanitation guys ended up showing up, and I told them I saw someone lurking around the building and to be mindful, and they looked at me like I was nuts, saying they didn't see anything. I thought maybe I had a long night and needed some sleep considering I haven't gotten a good night's rest in recent times, so I kind of brushed off the incident. That was until the next incident occurred. 
Keep in mind that the first incident occurred in the renovated part of the building. This next incident occurred in the old part of the building that hasn't been touched in years and is run down. I'm talking like sometimes you'll walk through and see dead raccoons and other animals who tried to seek shelter, asbestos on the ceilings, books, and paperwork from the 60s, you name it. The place hasn't been touched. I was tasked with finding a piece of equipment we needed for the gym that was in the old part of the school. Keep in mind that this isn't the easiest task considering it's a big facility, and I had to look through almost every room considering no one knew where it was. It's also sketchy and dangerous in there, considering it's not up to code by any means. And to top it all off, it was nighttime again, so everywhere I navigated, it was pitch black, and I needed a flashlight. This is occurring after my first incident, so I was not incredibly keen on doing this, but I need money and can't get fired, so I said fuck it. I had a knife on me in case someone was in there for some reason, since it's so easy to access and the area has a homelessness problem. I'm searching the rooms at this point, and I feel uneasy, to say the least. I kept getting waves of chills, and it was not cold at the time, and I kept hearing isolated noises throughout the building similar to what I had heard before. Though what really put me on guard was when I started hearing moaning echo through the halls. It sounded like a low groan someone makes when they feel sick or they're hurting badly. At this point, I was 100% sure I was not alone in this building. I have my knife drawn and am fully prepared to stab a motherfucker, because in my head it was either me or whoever else was in that building, and you never know people's intentions. The moaning got louder, I got more spooked, and then, to make matters worse, the lights flickered a bit. There's no working electricity in this part of the building. I'm at the point where I'm like, fuck this shit, I'm out, and I begin almost speed running this building to find the equipment. The noises and sketch shit begin getting louder and closer to me, and I'm in complete panic. After scouring as quickly as possible, I miraculously found the equipment. Before I left to book it back, I began to hear a new noise. It sounded like wheels from something creaking along the floor as they moved. What the fuck is this now? I leave the room I was in and begin to move towards my exit, but to my demise, the new noise I was hearing was in the direction I had to go. I turned the hall, and I immediately stopped in my tracks. Down the end of the hall, I see a large black figure of a man about 100 feet away. He's standing menacingly at about 7 feet tall, it seemed to be over what looked like a bucket and a mop. It just sat there and seemed like it was mopping the same spot over and over again, not moving much. I didn't know what to do, and I was shaking at this point. I made the decision to let the figure know that they weren't allowed in the building and that I would call the police in the hopes that what I was looking at was still human. Boy, was I fucking wrong? Once I said something down the hall to the figure, it turned towards me and had the brightest yellow eyes I'd ever seen, it was the only thing viewable on its body, almost as if they were like demons. It stared at me for a good 15 seconds as I stood there frozen, shitting my pants. And then the figure begins floating towards me at a very fast rate. I immediately started running, looking back to see the yellow eyes trailing me. I'm in full fucking sprint mode, and I'm a bigger guy, and tbh, I don't think I've run faster in my life even when I was in the best shape when I played football in high school. I get a few hallways down, look back, and don't see it anymore. Luckily, I find my exit and get to my car. I sat in my car, and I was so overwhelmed by what I saw that I started crying. My brain could barely comprehend what had just occurred, and I honestly thought I was about to die. My skin was 100% pale, and I felt beyond weak and fatigued. I called my manager, explained what occurred, and told them I either needed a raise or I'd never work at that building again. My manager understood because I'm not the first person to report paranormal activity in the building but was in complete shock by my story. Since they couldn't give me a raise since it would have to go through higher-ups, they don't schedule me there anymore. They actually ended up having a priest come through and try and cleanse the building, the community is pretty religious, but people who work there still say they hear shit, but luckily, nothing as dangerous and frightening as what I experienced, because I wish that upon no one. When I'm back there, I can provide pictures for the sake of legitimacy for the thread, but I'm not going back until I'm with a group of others and it's daytime. I hope this story fits well in this thread, and I'll be back to hopefully provide sauce. To answer your question, it did somewhat change my worldview on the paranormal. I always believed there was some existence to it, but never that egregious. I'm very cautious now when I hear their paranormal presence because if you mess up, it could get ugly. I had a moment I can't say is fully paranormal but definitely creepy. So it was about 2 AM. On a Monday morning, and I was up reading a book. I live in a single wide mobile home with a bedroom on each end. From the angle I was at in the bedroom, I could only see about 5 feet or so in the hall. The only light in the entire house is my lamp. I have my dog in my lap, and she's curled up, seemingly asleep. Out of my peripheral vision, I see a dark figure peek in the room and quickly move away from the door. 
In the split second it took for the next moment to transpire, I thought to myself that I was just seeing things until my dog reacted and started growling at the same thing I had just seen. My hair stood up, and I instantly got cold. I checked the house, the door is closed and locked, and all the windows are closed. It couldn't have been a passing car because in the area I live, there is no public road, just my driveway on the other side of the property. It still gives me chills to think about it. It didn't change any beliefs that I have, as I have always been accepting of the paranormal and the mysteries that come with it. I'd like to think a ghost found the wrong house. I hope he found his way home. I have two experiences I want to share, and I will give you some background information at the end to sum it up. My first experience was when I was 10. I lived with my four siblings, mom, dad, and grandma. We had a kitchen that was kind of small in a rectangle shape with two parallel hallways on either side of it. Think of an H as the layout, with two bedrooms at the end of each hall. After a few months living there and going by the kitchen every day and night to head to my bedroom, I started noticing there was something going by the other side of the hallway each time I would pass in the evening. If I stared into the kitchen when I passed, there was nothing, but if I looked ahead at my room and passed, the ghostly figure would as well be in my peripheral vision. It scared the living shit out of me but also piqued my curiosity a bit, so I didn't tell anyone until about a week after it started. I told my older sister, and she nearly started crying, saying she thought she was the only one who saw her. In her experience, though, the figure was crossing on my side of the kitchen and not hers. As far as we could tell, it was a little girl in something that was white, like a gown. We never figured out what she wanted or anything but just came to accept that she was there until we moved out a year later. Parents said they believed us but didn't act like it. Nothing ever happened like in the movies or anything, she was just there every evening, crossing when we crossed. My second experience was at a different house when I was 19 and still living with my mom. This one scared the living shit out of me, causing me to not sleep for nearly 56 hours and spend nights in my car or at a friend's house for a few weeks until my nerves calmed down. It was a normal evening like every other, nothing out of the ordinary. I had started smoking a little Mary J, but not crazy amounts, just a little bit here and there, like two puffs out of a bowl of low quality stuff. Just enough so I could feel it, but not enough to make me seem or act different. I decided to watch a movie after and ended up falling asleep in bed halfway through. I can't remember what dream I was having because it was years ago, but I remember having one and feeling like something was on top of me in the dream, causing me to feel like I couldn't breathe. Which woke me up with a shock, and my eyes burst open to an absolute blackness of space hovering about two feet above my body. After what seemed like forever but in reality was only a second or two, this blackness of space shot to the corner of my room parallel to the height it was already at, then shot up to the ceiling clinging to the corner, and then flew to the opposite corner of the room. It moved with such quickness that my eyes barely caught its movement. I quickly pulled my blanket over my eyes and almost started crying because of how scared I was. I sat there for, I don't know, how long, but I gathered the courage to look and see if what I just saw was real. To my horror, when I pulled the blanket back down, the void was still in the exact same spot where I had seen it move. This time, fighting all my instincts, I didn't look away. I stared at it, waiting for it to move or do something, but it never did. After I'd how long I gathered the courage to quickly get up and turn my lights on, and to my relief, the void was gone. I'm literally getting scared typing this out. To this day, I still don't know what to make of what I experienced. My close family as a whole has had experiences similar to these. My oldest sister and I seem to run into more spirits than our other siblings, though. I have a theory of where it all began but I don't have any way of proving it so I don't bother. Let me know what you guys think, and if you can shed any light on the matter, I would appreciate it. I've had many. My sister and I shared a room, I was four and she was six. It was late at night, and we heard a knock on our bedroom door. Our baby brother wouldn't have been able to do it without being noticed because of how our house was built. And my parents just don't do stuff like that. Being the amazing big sister she is, she has me open the door. Nothing was there. One of my great grandparents died a couple days before I thought I was told. I was six when this happened. I was in bed, falling asleep. I felt something holding my toes and tickling them. It scared the crap out of me because nothing was there. One of my great grandparents died five minutes prior. This year, our water heater turned off. You can't turn it off without a later, none of us know where the ladder is, and even with the later, it's a little too high to reach. And you also have to push the knob in and turn it. Our plumber told us we have a ghost in our house. It's quite common in this country because it's so old. A couple weeks ago, my parents, at 1 a.m., heard my brother and my boyfriend talking in the hall. My boyfriend was at his house, and my brother was asleep. My parents could hear them talking but couldn't make out the words. 
It sounded like gibberish. A lot of other things have been happening in my house, some things falling over, my dog staring and barking at corners of my house, things getting unplugged. I've always believed in the paranormal. I find it so fascinating. My boyfriend doesn't believe in it, but that's okay. I love watching videos, researching, and reading books about it. I used to check out a book at my school library about true stories of haunted places in Canada. I would read it every library day we had. Before the pandemic, my office was in an old opera house in central Minnesota. It was built in 1897, a big fire burned it down in 1913, and it was restored sometime after 2000. Inside, there are three floors, with the third floor being mostly a balcony. Hanging from the middle of the room is a huge chandelier that was one of the original pieces there. The first floor was mostly shipping and administrative offices, and stairs led up to the second floor, which was set up mostly like a cubicle room. The third floor was only a balcony, with some more cubicles up there. That's where my desk was. And for a while, the company experimented with being open on weekends to see if there was any business we were missing, there wasn't really. So twice I worked Saturday. 8 AM. To noon. The building is silent, I leave all the lights off because I like the dark. Nobody is in the entire building except me. And about 20 times during the 4 hour shift, I hear footsteps running across the concrete floor of the second floor, and occasionally lights flash on and off in the chandelier, which I had left off purposely because it was right in my eye line. I keep hearing footsteps, but I see nothing. I go down to the second floor and investigate, see if someone broke in. The sound becomes more localized. I can hear it approach me, be at me, and then be behind me. I had no reasonable explanation for these events and was forced to conclude that there was something moving around that I couldn't see. I told my coworkers about it on Monday. Most of my team was like, oh, that's cool, whatever, but the ones who had been in the building for years asked, did you see the ghost though? Four different people described the same ghosts, a young girl with blonde hair and a young boy with shaggy black hair. So either I'm getting pranked or they all have seen things when they work there a long time too. And the footsteps could not have been a prank, as far as I know. This is not paranormal, but my experience with sleep paralysis I just wanted to share it. I don't know what time of the night that was, but I was sure it was past 1 AM. I suddenly woke up for no reason. Thinking this was normal, I tried to get up. That's when I realized I couldn't move. I panicked, so I tried to shout, but it was useless, I couldn't move or make a noise. This was the first time I experienced something like this. I was absolutely terrified and confused. I tried to forcefully move my body, but it wouldn't move even for a bit. It felt like some strange force was pushing me down. I gave up on moving, so I tried to wait, hoping this would subside. I scanned the room so I could distract myself and calm down, and that was when I saw it. Just at the side of the room, a black figure was standing. It looked like a disfigured shadow of a woman. I, of course, like a normal human, am absolutely freaked out. I was cursing nonstop in my head. I tried to forcefully move, but again, it was useless. I just closed my eyes because I didn't know what to do. When I opened it again, the black figure was gone. I immediately set my sight on the ceiling, afraid I might see it again. That's where my memories are cut off. I woke up the following day and thought what I experienced was a dream, but I got curious, so I searched for a similar case on the net. That's where I confirmed it was sleep paralysis. That was my experience. I'm sorry for any wrong grammar, by the way. I'm not good at this. My girlfriend, now wife, and I were in college at the time, in a place she was renting. We'd had experiences in this house before, most notably glinting people in mirrors, but nothing like what was about to happen. We were sitting up in bed talking when we heard something from her bathroom, where we had always caught glimpses of things in the past. So we are sitting quietly, and then, I don't know how else to put it, something sat on the end of the bed. The depression from the weight was visible, though admittedly not as extreme as it would be under a real person. After a full minute of silence, I finally thought I needed to do something, so I said loudly, we want you to leave. Another few seconds went by, and then the weight lifted. The bed even made a slight creak, and it was gone. The most convincing part was that as soon as the thing was gone, all three of her cats came out from under the bed at once, meowing and looking around. Yeah. I think it changed my outlook a bit. I still can't say I believe in ghosts, or at least not ghosts as most people would use that term but something we couldn't see was there. I maintain that it, one, made physical contact with our bed, two, left when I spoke to it, and, three, was experienced by another intelligent human being and three cats. Three years ago, I moved into a dorm room with my friends during our third year of college. 
Our room had two bunk beds, I slept in one of the top bunks. One night I woke up sweating, so I moved to the floor, thinking that it was cooler there. I set a futon on the floor and slept. I woke up in the middle of the night. It was dark, but I could see the outlines and the grooves in the ceiling. On my right, somebody moved in my periphery, it was my friend who was occupying the lower bunk. He lay on his side, facing me, his hand supporting his head. Like how one of those Roman emperors would lie in the movies. He grinned a creepy, sickening grin. He looked amused. He grabbed his prayer book on the table next to the bed and started reading a prayer. He returned the book to the table, but he still continued to pray. I tried to call his name, but the sound would not come out. I tried again and again. The prayer turned into chanting. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I tried again to call his name as I became uneasy. Ian moved, and he started to crawl towards me. The grin is still on his face. I can still hear him chanting, but his lips are not moving. I tried calling for my other friends who were occupying the bunk bed to leave. I still can't make a sound. His chanting became softer, as if he were far away. Then I can feel his breath in my ear. His face was near mine, still grinning and chanting without moving his lips. At this point, I am shitting my pants. I can't move, and I can't scream. I can only see and think. I screamed out loud in my head, calling out to God, calling to Jesus. I felt my throat hurt. A loud bang from a closing door jerked me awake. I sat up, sweating. Everything was peaceful, everyone was sound, indeed. The roommate that I saw crawling towards me was sound asleep, facing the wall. I woke him up and asked him if anything had happened. He got confused, so I just told him to go back to sleep. I went back up to the top bunk. I knew it was sleep paralysis, but still, it creeped me out, especially when you know it's just your mind trying to kill you. Well, the first time I noticed something odd was years ago, and it started with the heavy footsteps I'd hear in the middle of the night. Then, not long after they started, I was just chilling, watching some TV, and a Christmas ornament was thrown off my tree and shattered at my feet. It was a rather simple glass ball filled with glitter and confetti. I wasn't too upset, but I was definitely put off, and cleaning the carpet was annoying but still not a big deal. I was able to forget about it for a while, but then the voices started. I never heard any clear words, but I could hear mumbling or even laughter. I honestly just passed it off as well, I'm going crazy. Maybe I should stop watching horror movies, but I didn't. After a few more months, I'd started to feel eyes burning into me, breath down my neck, and other small things like that. The shadows would move every now and then. At this point, I knew it couldn't be just me, so I blamed it on the fact that when I was younger, I tried to summon multiple demons, and even though I thought my attempts failed, perhaps I was wrong. Anyway, as few more years go by, things get increasingly worse, and now it's not just happening when I'm alone. My brother has now experienced many of the same things I have. And now, months later, we're here in 2020. Whatever things are in my house have started to show themselves to me, there's a woman in my parents' bedroom, some strange shadow thing in my room, a little boy that usually shows up peering between the railings on the staircase, and a few others. Some of them are friendly and make me feel protected, however, those ones I never see, but I can feel their presence, like a guardian angel or something. The ones I mentioned above are not friendly, not to me at least. The woman in my parents' room is either standing in their doorway or climbing on the ceiling, and while she's never made any attempt to physically interact with me, she has a very unsettling aura. The shadow thing in my room has interacted with me, usually it's positioned just above my closet with its right limbs on the wall and its left limbs on my ceiling, and its head will be turned at uncomfortable angles to stare at me. Sometimes it climbs down, though, and on those occasions, or if I don't see it at all, I can expect to wake up to bruises and scratches, or, on some occasions, be woken up by the thing choking me. It doesn't try to kill me, though it seems to just want to scare me. Honestly, I don't mind the choking, but it's rather difficult to hide some of the marks it's left. Now for my least favorite, the little boy on the stairs. He was the first one to make himself known to me. One morning I was getting ready to leave for school, and I was the only one home. I looked behind me because I thought I heard my dog, but he was asleep. However, something caught my eye. For a second, I thought I saw my brother there on the stairs, but he'd already left for school, so it couldn't be. Upon closer inspection, my heart dropped, and I panicked. The kid had no eyes, mouth, or nose, his face was mostly smooth, other than some shallow dimples where his eyes should be and some small lumps in his nose and mouth. I was barely ready, but I couldn't stand to be there any longer, 
so I grabbed my bag and left. Once again, this one has made minimal contact with me, but I have found small toys that belong neither to me nor my brother sometimes, and he will occasionally grab at my feet or ankles while I walk. I'm fairly certain he's not the one I hear laughing, but I could be wrong about that. Anyways, sorry for making you read all that, and I take full responsibility for any nightmares you may have after this. I just don't usually have much to contribute to these people's experiences, so I got a little carried away. My ex-girlfriend was super into ghost hunting and anything paranormal. I always believed in ghosts since I was a kid, but when I met her, I really started to believe it. When I say she was really into ghosts, I'll tell you she is way into ghosts. She has a ghost tattoo on her arm, and she does ghost hunting. Loves the stuff. Well, she bought a very old picture at a thrift shop of a little girl. It's an old black and white photo from when they would photograph the dead. Yes, she owns a picture of a dead little girl. She's all dressed up in a white dress. She calls her Joyce. Well, we moved in together, and she hung the photo in the dining room. The first night in the place we were laying in bed, we were all alone in the house. We heard someone walk down our hallway and into the back bedroom. We both looked at each other in shock. I had never experienced anything like that. She was nervous, but I could tell she was kind of enjoying this. We went out and looked, obviously, no one was there. We went back to bed and heard someone walk out of the back bedroom and back down the hall. That was pretty much it for a while. A couple months later, same predicament, laying in bed all alone in the house. And we heard something that sounded like a window breaking and a loud bang. I immediately jumped out of bed to investigate. No windows are broken, nothing. We walked in the dining room and saw that Joyce had fallen off the way with such force that it took a chunk out of a wooded bench that was under the photo, and the picture was halfway out in the middle of the room. The glass was broken all over the place. This picture definitely didn't just fall. It was tossed. So we cleaned it up and went back to bed. Things were calm for a while. I worked on the road while we lived together, so she was home alone for four nights a week. She would always say she would get uneasy feelings in the house sometimes while I was gone. Nothing crazy happened for a few months after the picture was taken. One night, though, all changed, and this is the point of this post. We were in the kitchen, she was coming, and I was helping out and talking with her. While standing at the stove, she was mid-sentence, stopped cooking, turned around, and backed away from the stove. It was odd. I asked, what was that about? She said she thought she saw her daughter, 2.5 years old, run up behind her and didn't want to crush her between the stoves. I could clearly see her daughter lying in the living room, 20 feet away, watching TV. I brushed it all off and laughed. About two minutes later, she asked me for something out of the pantry. I turned around to get it, and I saw a little girl dressed in a white dress run out of the kitchen and into the dining room and completely disappear. I was so shocked. I immediately looked into the living room to see if her daughter was in the kitchen. Nope, still laying in the living room watching TV. We talked about it, and we came to the conclusion that we were seeing Joyce, the girl from the picture she bought. This experience changed my view of ghosts completely. I believed before, but now I can say for a fact that they're real. My wife and I, along with our two kids, live in a basement apartment in Richmond Hill, Ontario. One night, my wife and I had a little argument as she was lying on the bed and had a high fever too. I was trying to comfort her rather than just attack her, knowing that she was sick. She finally fell asleep, and I went outside to park my car in the driveway because my car was parked on the street, and parking enforcement will give you a ticket if you park on the street after midnight. I came back after three minutes and witnessed the most terrifying scene of my life. The three rolls of toilet paper were scattered all over the living room. One piece of toilet paper was purposefully rolled on top of the stairs leading to the upstairs living room. I felt like my heartbeat stopped for a moment, and I didn't know if I was having a nightmare or if it was reality. My logical thinking immediately convinced me that it was my wife who did this, but when I looked at her, she was deeply asleep and snoring, as were my other two small kids, who were three and four years old, and they couldn't have possibly done that. Out of intense fear, I woke my wife up and explained what happened, by then I had cleaned up the toilet paper pieces. She was really scared and couldn't believe such an incident happened. 30 minutes later, my younger son woke up scratching himself. When I turned on the light to see what happened, I saw these rashes on his back, which I had never seen before. I immediately called the ambulance, and they injected him with Benadryl. Things turned out to be fine in the end, but I will never forget that night. I lived in Savannah, Georgia, for four years in college and had always heard about the haunted history of the town but never experienced anything myself. About a month before I graduated, a friend and I left a bar and walked to get some pizza about nine blocks away. We turned down a street that skirts many of the historic city squares along the way, 
taking a route we have taken many times before. As we pass under a parking garage, someone above starts throwing change at us. Like, a lot of change. We were laughing at first, but then it started to hurt, and we were yelling above us for the person to stop. We cross the street, and the parking garage ends behind us, but the change doesn't stop. It's now flying at us from above, below, and side to side. All directions. There is no one on the streets with us, as we are kind of away from the main bar area. When we realize that the change isn't coming from some drunk asshole, we start getting kind of scared and start running towards the pizza shop. Whenever we have to stop at a crossing to let cars pass, boom. We are showered with change. I start picking it up because none of our friends are going to believe this story if we come back without evidence. So I gather as many pennies, it ended up being all pennies, some new and some old, as my purse can hold, and we get a cab back to the bar. I dump out the pennies on a table, and still no one believes us. The next morning, I googled ghosts that throw change and was directed to some writings on poltergeists and how apparently one of their favorite gags is to throw change at people. It was scary at the time, but I'm glad Savannah didn't let me leave without my own good ghost story. My grandmother died when I was nine, she had been sick with cancer for two years. She raised me, and I spent all my time with her, just cuddling next to her and watching TV. The day she died, I prayed to God that he wouldn't let her die. She did, about eight hours later, and I threw out God and any notion of an afterlife. With other contributing factors, I became depressed and suicidal. I spent 10 years not being able to speak about her without crying and without a source of faith in my life. 11 years after she died, I took LSD with my boyfriend and two mutual friends. I have no idea what the potency was, but I took one quarter of a little square and spent the next 7 or 8 hours talking to my boyfriend about my childhood and how certain events affected me, I don't remember any of it, but that's what he says happened. I only remember this next part, at one point, my boyfriend got up to use the bathroom, and I sat up on the bed. As if I were hit by a brick, a feeling of intense comfort and pure love washed over me. I began to weep, and my grandmother's face appeared above me. She was surrounded by a light that was so incredibly golden, pure gold light. She spoke to me, and I replied, and she spoke again. I don't remember what we said, but she disappeared, and I felt like I was being cradled. It's the same feeling as when you're a little kid and you're being held against your mom's chest, though for me, it was my grandmother, held tight, and you know you're safe and loved. My boyfriend came back into the room and asked what happened. I told him, and he was amazed. That day, I said to myself, if my grandmother can come see me, she is living after death. So there must be something after we die. I let myself believe in her, first and foremost. Maybe God isn't there, but my grandmother is. I started a routine of talking to her when I needed solace. I would light a white candle and chat as if we were on the phone. In the three years since that LSD trip, I have found my long-lost belief in God, and I have regular visits from my grandmother in my frequent lucid dreams. I also wanted to add that belief in God doesn't have to be about God himself. God is what humanity called the benevolent energy we felt but couldn't see. I'm a hardcore skeptic of most supernatural and paranormal things, but I am low-key convinced ghosts do exist because of a few different experiences in my life. My dad died when I was 12, two weeks to the day for my 13th birthday. I was born at around 1 a.m., and for three or four years after that, I would always wake up at around 1 a.m. on my birthday to the feeling of someone rubbing my back, I sleep on my side, which was how my dad would always wake me up in the mornings for school. Sometimes, I'll get random whiffs of his cologne and cigarettes mixed together, a very distinctive smell that I vividly remember from my childhood. After my maternal grandmother died at the age of 98, my mother and I decided to keep living in her house because it's an easier commute to work for us both. We'd spent the last few years of her life staying with her and helping her around the house. Well, after her death, the lights started turning on and off randomly overnight throughout the house. My mom's room is next to what was my grandmother's room, and she's heard movement in that room at night, as if my grandmother were getting up to go to the bathroom. Our phone went on the fritz and would randomly call my aunt, who was my grandmother's power of attorney and executrix, without any of us touching it. We'd never know a call had been made until my aunt would call us, asking what we'd wanted. The day my paternal grandmother died, I saw a man across the street from our house who looked eerily like my paternal grandfather as a young man, and he had predeceased her by five years. I have also had a few experiences relating to paranormal activity in famously haunted places that were unrelated to my relatives, but those are stories for other times. I have had a lot of paranormal or supernatural experiences that have made me a skeptical believer, I believe my experiences happened, but I am skeptical of others, lol. One is that I had a demon living in my room. It started off with things being knocked off my desk, 
mainly my keys. I'd wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of my keys or something loud dropping on the floor. Things that couldn't have moved on their own or weren't near enough to the edge to fall off on their own then the dream started. I was having nightmares every single night, like waking up covered in sweat and feeling like you were about to die. This evolved into straight up night terrors and sleep paralysis. Soon, hallucinations started to happen, and I would have incredibly realistic dreams or hallucinations of snakes and rats on me. But when I'd wake up and throw them off, there'd be nothing there. Finally, I saw it. I woke up to something smelling rotten and putrid. It was crouched in the corner of my room next to my laundry basket with its back to me, it looked humanoid and was holding my clothes, it even had some draped over its body. When I jumped up, it was gone, and my clothes were on the floor. I wasn't sure what I saw, so I ran around the house, locking the doors and checking everywhere. After that, my sister started to hear things and see things in my room. This was before I even told anyone what I was experiencing. She finally came to me one night, terrified because she thought she saw me crouched in the dark next to my laundry basket. When she realized it wasn't me, she froze up, and it disappeared when she blinked, and my clothes were on the floor again. So I told her what I was experiencing and why I was so tired all the time. Eventually, it got to the point where the shenanigans no longer scared me. It wasn't harming me, and the worst thing was the random smell. It just sort of went away one day, and I never had another experience in my room again. So I've never believed in paranormal things. I've always said I'll believe it when I see it. I always took people's accounts with a grain of salt, keeping in mind that the brain is incredibly powerful. In my early 20s, I would start waking up with things moved around or clothes off I didn't take off. I was a heavy drinker my whole life. I never blacked out, and it happened when I didn't drink as well. Still, I never thought of ghosts, maybe roommates were fucking with me. One day, I woke up. Room tossed, the door ripped off the frame, the dresser destroyed, cuts all over my body. It freaked me out, and I still wouldn't accept that it may be something paranormal. I was drunk that time, so I figured I blacked out and maybe had a fight with someone, as I always had company over. Text around. Nope. I remember all the events of the night. I went to bed, no one else was home. Cut forward a couple of years, first time living with a girl. I wake up to her screaming as I'm dragging her by the hair into the bathroom. I freak out. Book a doctor's appointment. I'm diagnosed as an epileptic, complex partial frontal lobe. I had 22 seizures in 16 hours when they hooked up my first EEG. I found the cause of my bipolar, headaches, and many other physical ailments. So to this day, I still stand behind logical explanations, even though I experienced SHT happening to and around me that had no logical explanation, until it did. Maybe some people never find their logical explanation. I married that woman, I'm medicated, mostly happy, and we have a kid together now. Damn, where do I start with this one? I have a few stories that really changed my view of the paranormal. There are times when I'll be jamming out to music and I'll feel the vibrations of someone walking through the house, and I'll remove one of my earphones and listen for anything and ask if my sister or dad is home. It's a 50-50 chance that I'll get a reply back or not, so I learn to ignore it and go back to jamming out to music and working. But the stuff that screws me up the most is when I get a tug on my hoodie and I have to pull my hoodie back so I'm not choking, only to have it get tugged again. Sometimes I'll hear someone call my name, and I'll look around and ask them what? And I'll never get a reply. It doesn't help that I'm home alone often. I'm pretty sure everyone sees something run by in the corner of their eye, but what you don't see every day is someone poking their head out of your room in the dark and running in and out of your room. Sometimes all the lights in my room will flicker, and I'll ask whoever is doing that to stop, and it just randomly stops, and I'm always like, ooh, thanks? I'm just confused half of the time. There was one time I woke up randomly in the night to a painting my sister did, which flew off my wall and onto the floor. So, like a normal person, I get up and put it back on my wall, scroll on my phone for a bit, and try to go back to sleep. Apparently, any time I try to go back to sleep, the painting will fly off the wall again. I didn't get to sleep till 6 AM. Another instance is when I woke up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, and there was a random old lady just standing there. I just turned around and walked back to my room. I'll never forget the sight of her just standing in the shadows of the bathroom, staring back at me. I couldn't see her face that well since it was dark but I could tell it was an old woman. Not the best of nights. I see this random cat in the house when I pass by doorways. I have three other cats in the house, but none of them have this ginger tan coat. I would always back up and look into the room to see nothing there and just shrug it off as my imagination. Only seen it two to three times. I'm pretty sure it's my pet cat's brother or sister that my dad accidentally hit with his car when I was little. 
I think it was my aunt that caused the house to get haunted since she played in Ouija board in my sister's room before either one of us was born. She still refuses to sleep in that room after a nightmare she had in there. It doesn't help that she said a black hooded figure ran at her before she woke up, because when I slept in there, in the corner of that stupid room was just a random shadow person with a hood, staring at me and slowly moving around the room. I woke up once with the thing standing directly over me while my sister slept on the bottom bunk. I just sort of waved at it and stared at it for a bit before I went back to sleep. I saw it most nights I slept in that room and just shrugged it off as me being tired until my aunt told that story. I don't know. I just learned to live with this, and it's been part of my life for ages. My sisters hate the paranormal, and they always make jokes about me befriending random ghosts in the house. My dad saw the one that literally runs in and out of my room and had a full-blown freak out when I texted him to keep the door open so the ghost could just run in and out of my room. He ended up sleeping at my stepmother's house the weekend I was gone. It was pretty funny to me, but he was pretty terrified.